The Adobe Product Library is like the hidden gem of the product suite. So why isn't it a bigger deal? And how do we use this completely free, no product training required, seamlessly integrated into all the other Adobe products, yet still stands alone on its own ubiquitous tool? Hmm. Hey guys, I'm Patrick Fuller, and in my last video, we navigated the Creative Cloud app and focused in on the Adobe library. But we don't necessarily want to just consume other people's libraries. We want to create something for our own that we can use over and over and over again to create great content. So as somebody who has created a library, let me show you what I did, how I did it, so that you can get a better feel for how you might want to do it. Let's go. So this is my Creative Cloud library inside of the cloud app. And you can see the web gradients where we left off in the last video, but you can also check out some of the things I have. So let me highlight a couple things that I think is really, really important. The first thing here is I've created a library called Core, and this has a lot of the reusable assets that I use in multiple projects. I also have a stock images where anything that I might use that's kind of a graphical overlay, I can drop that in here, and now I don't have to search around in file folders to figure out where they are and drag and drop them. They're all right here. Some of the other things that I like to put in here would be text animation things that I can drag and drop, they're Mogart files, but you can still use those. Colorful transitions, slates, and even subtitles, just because I like to take basically all of my Mogart files and put them up in the cloud, the ones that I use most often. Now, if we take a look at these stock images again, we could do a handful of things here. I can add an item. I can regroup items. I can rename an item and I can add multiple items to a group. It all depends on how you want to group things to make it a little bit easier on you. Now, if we jump into Premiere Pro, let's get out of web gradients here and let's go to stock images. The first thing you see is the flower that I dropped in there, it's already available. So I can simply just click and drag that into my timeline and bam, it's easy to use. And if I want to use a motion graphics file, I can pull one up from the library. Let's scroll down here. Let's say I want to use something that's usually fairly complicated to do by dropping in some sort of vertical chart here. All I need to do is let it load. And now I've got a chart or any really Mogart file that I can use for editing. The best part is I could use this same Mogart file anywhere else. Now, one of the updates that Adobe has recently made is the ability to use audio files in the cloud. So in my core section here, I actually have a few stock sound effects that I really, really like. And let's say I wanna add this quick whip. I can right click, add to project. It drops it right into the project bin here. And now I can easily put it in my timeline. And if you're wondering where the cloud app stores those physical files, let me show you. So here's my test project. I have a new folder here called CC Library Downloads. If I pop that open, there is my quick whip, there is my web gradient, and there is my flower. Now, let's say I wanna use those same files, minus the audio file, for a thumbnail, and I wanna do that in Photoshop. But I don't wanna copy and paste the files and create a folder and move it over, and that's why I have the library. So if I open up Photoshop here, I come over here to Library, come down to Stock Images, Find my flower, drop that on there. Go back, find that web gradient. Let's see, where did I put that? Let's say I think it was this one. Drop that in here. Make it look a little bit better. And then easy peasy. And the best part is because these are from the Adobe Creative Cloud library and not physical files, you can actually see in Photoshop, they have a little cloud icon. Super easy to store, super easy to find. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why the Adobe library isn't a bigger deal, but I do think you should absolutely check it out and absolutely you should create libraries of your own and just see how they work for you. And if you end up creating libraries a little bit differently than I did, maybe a lot differently, then absolutely let me know because I'm all about innovation and trying new things. If you got something out of this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Always, always, it's not, not even mine. They're always the yard guys. The library. Blah. Hmm. Hmm.